guys, so I got a few messages from people who asked me uh, to talk about Poly Poly and her setup and the various upgrades I've done to her over the past few years. So um, maybe I thought about uh, taking a bit of time since I'm on vacation here for two weeks on Baskatang Reservoir and uh, I chose uh, this beach I really love to come to. It's uh, kind of a sandbar between uh, two islands. Uh, and uh, there's really no wind or almost no wind right now. So I'll take advantage of this and uh, go through this with you guys. But first, what's the deal with her name, Poli Poli? Well, we travel a lot and we often uh, travel to Africa and we're in love with the safari, the cultures of many countries over there like Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Namibia, uh, South Africa. We've been to uh, quite a few countries and plan to go back uh, later. And in one of the native languages called Swahili in Africa, the locals always say poli poli, which is, uh, it could translate to slowly, slowly in their local, uh, and it's their local saying basically. And uh, it's a way of, for them to say, take your time, relax. It's a bit like in Jamaica when they say Iri, uh, and in Africa, in Swahili, they say poli poli. So it's about don't stress. And uh, it was uh, really fitting for us to name our boat that way because we are not by any stretch of imagination uh, racers. Uh, we're more cruisers for sure. And uh, we like to keep it slow and relaxed. So there it is. So here it goes. So she's a 2010-26M and I'm the second owner. Uh, and I believe the first owner must have bought her maybe in 2011 because the engine on her is uh, 2011. Anyways. Uh, when I bought her, she was uh, pretty much a stock Mac where I had to go uh, right up to the mast and uh, raise uh, the mainsail uh, with the halyard. There was no, no cockpit control of any kind. And, uh, and you know the drill. So anyway, the only addition that she had at the time was a good Raymarine chart plotter. And uh, so I didn't change that. But for the rest, it's pretty much... Uh, I pretty much brought her to this point gradually in the last six, seven years since I bought her in 2017. So maybe it's best that I try to go through this in categories. This way you could jump to a section that may be more interesting to you. So I will talk about sailing upgrades and then later on cover electronics and safety. And finally I'll uh, talk about comfort and electrical and I'll try to put the, uh, the time uh, stamp uh, in the description. Sailing upgrades. Well, the engine is part of uh, this power boat, uh, power cell boat. So uh, it's an Evinrude uh, 60 horsepower E-Tech. Been very satisfied with uh, that engine. Had zero issue uh, with it. And uh, the only thing I added is the quick uh, disconnect to uh, keep it in the upright position. Uh, keep it in the straight position when I go upright so it doesn't uh, pull on the steering. But uh, other than that, engine has been great for sure. So I've changed uh, boat sails since I've had her. I uh, changed the mainsail and the Genoa. Show you those uh, in a second. Um, and uh, basically the mainsail has two reefs and I've uh, installed the reefing lines on the boom. Let me just walk around this here for a second. And I'll show you this under sail. Maybe I'll get some footage, but this is how I reef this on this side. I got the second reef. So uh, this is uh, for the front and uh, the rear of the sail. And uh, the blue line on the other side is my uh, first reef. So reef number one is uh, that side blue and reef number two is uh, red. So here you can see I got the adjustable um, uh, outhaul adjustment and I added a topping lift uh, just to add uh, uh, some options to keep the, the boom up, but I also have uh, this came with the boat actually when I bought it I have the boom kicker that keeps it up, but I like the uh, extra adjustment of uh, the topping lift Also, you see obviously I have the sail bag lazy bag. It's basically a sail bag with the lazy jack It's working really well again. I'll try to find some footage and maybe add that to this video uh, But uh, this was a great addition when I upgraded the sail. It was uh, a lot bigger or thicker would not fit in the uh, bag I had before, which was a sail cover really. And uh, then um, if I was gonna change the sail, sail cover, I might as well go to a sail bag. So that's how this happened. And uh, the head sail is a 150% Genoa with the sock cover. So you see that in front there. Maybe I'll go all the way to the front and show you quickly 
I don't know what, but really this, the, the, the sock cover. I've done a video about the uh, sail pack and uh, sock cover, so I'm sure you could watch that for more information. But this protects it from the sun, also protects it while, uh, while uh, traveling. Trailering, I should say. So if you use a Genoa, uh, not just a jib, you're aware that you have to put a, uh, a, a block here and you run the line to the winch and back here to operate uh, the Genoa. But I added these things here in light wind and I only put the car here if I'm gonna sail in uh, heavier wind. So this is, um, I think they call it a track uh, cam cleat or something at Blue Water Yacht. It's great, it's really easy to uh, maneuver the, the um, the Genoa to adjust the sheets and uh, it takes a lot less space than running a line here through people that sometimes may sit here through this you know the drill if you use a, a Genoa with these uh, uh, these uh, blocks uh, on the track there then you need that for the Genoa if you have a jib of course the jib uh, doesn't go outside the shell so you're okay but for the Genoa that was a great addition anyway so another thing is I ran all the all the lines uh, to the cockpit all the lines are run aft so I got the, the halyard for the main and uh, the way I did it, got the idea from somebody else here. I looped the same halyard line back up the mast and this is essentially a, a downhaul. So there's not a whole lot of uh, line left in the cockpit uh, when, the, when the main is up. And all the lines are run either through spin lock uh, clutches uh, or in this case, this one here is for my new uh, spinnaker. This is the tack for the spinnaker. And I put that on the on the Harkon uh, uh, cam cleat. On this side, another spin lock. Uh, this one controls the uh, the roller furling line, and uh, the main uh, the main sheet obviously comes down here, like any 26M on the Traveler. And I also changed all the standing rigging and upgraded the uh, the head stay to a larger diameter. So the way I got the spinnaker set up, I got that just last year is uh, the tack line runs to the cockpit and it goes to the um, the bowsprit i made for it using the uh, bow uh, the, the anchor roller the stock anchor roller and i added a longer anchor roller of course for uh, for my uh, anchor and uh, the way i got this set up is i got this uh, witchard uh, quick release um, shackle snap shackle and uh, if uh, imagine the cell is on this and if as it goes up the blue line will uh, capture here i just adjusted the blue line to the maximum height i would want to go or a bit above maximum height and then if i pull any more it just releases like that and that would be the quick way to uh, blow the chute in an emergency i guess so and uh, the asin spinnaker is in a kind of a turtle bag here so i could launch it uh, and i'll show you footage of that if i can and it's in a uh, atn sock which is a great way to launch a spinnaker a lot less intimidating for me at least easy to control you just deploy it and and douse it with the sock uh, and i'll try to show some footage of that here we go all right there you go not easy and no, I will not dive to show you my uh, Bruce uh, anchor, but it's working great for this, uh, this uh, the bottom here of uh, this reservoir. Always held uh, strongly, so when I pull it up, show you a picture and maybe talk about the weight, because I don't remember the weight, to be honest. Uh, oh, back to the spinnaker, I forgot to mention that this is obviously the uh, spinnaker um, sheets. So, uh, going back to uh, the cockpit, oh yeah, I have the, the front uh, anchor, of course, Bruce, and uh, I have my stern anchor that is uh, currently used here, uh, which is uh, 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 basically a, a straight up uh, fluke uh, anchor, or some people call them Danford uh, anchor, I think, it's just for my stern. And I'm sure you all know about this valve to fill and empty the ballast. But I was, uh, what I've done is I was fed up of having to go to the front under the berth and unplug the uh, the vent. So I uh, modified it to be like an automatic vent, and I ran a hose all the way up to the anchor locker height, and uh, that way um, uh, it could vent uh, in and out without me having to go to the front. Another thing I added was the 3M product uh, keel protection uh, because we like to beach the boat uh, quite a bit and we feel it's a good protection for the hull. 
and uh, just this here I also added the bottom coat which makes it look great. So let's cover the uh, electronics and safety. Uh, first of all for navigation uh, the boat as I said came with this uh, chart plotter it's the E series and it's been really good so I haven't changed that didn't need to change that and I added to it the autopilot and the uh, wind vane this year. Uh, so this is uh, obviously the, the I-60 uh, wind vane system and uh, the, um, the wind vane uh, for myself, I mounted that on my solar arch up here uh, simply because I didn't want to go through uh, bother to going through the trouble of correcting the mass rotation because the ham has a mass rotation and you have to correct that if you put it up there and uh, this is the p70 control head for the ev100 uh, autopilot that works really well for me love this upgrade and uh, the rest of the supporting electronics for this like the sensor core the acu are mounted above the rear berth so i'll show you that in a second and uh, the um, the uh, chart plotter came with uh, a depth depth and uh, water speed sensor that's mounted at the stern so i've covered this before in another video but if you haven't seen it uh, i mounted all my electronics uh, on a well first of all this is a 3d printed uh, box uh, or, or pod i guess you could call it they sell those for a fortune. I had it 3D printed for a fraction of the cost. And my uh, auto helm is uh, the name, because we all give them a name, right? So my autopilot name is Captain Morgan. I give him control often, more often than uh, he wants to admit or I want to admit, but yeah. Uh, and and the way I mounted this is that I could swivel that on, uh, on either side. I got this uh, Marine uh, Ram mount. They have a really complete website. You could choose so many different types of uh, mounts. And this one I like. You lock in the position if you want to. I could swivel uh, just this part if I want to. I rarely do, but I could just swivel this one if I wanted to. Or um, the whole thing swivel like this. So when I go on attack and I want to sit on the other side, I just bring my instrument to the side I'm uh, sailing. And uh, other things I mounted on my solar arch is uh, this uh, VHS antenna, I got some fishing rod holder, my Canadian flag of course, and, uh, and a horn here. Uh, I was uh, fed up of uh, carrying these uh, air horn and so on, so I mounted that an actual horn. And, whoops, and did the button right here. And my VHS uh, radio is a standard Horizon uh, radio with a microphone. Oh, just realized it says submersible on the microphone. That's reassuring. I never saw that. And uh, other safety items I added uh, was the netting. We added that a few years ago just to avoid uh, our dogs potentially falling over. We have two small dogs, a miniature pincher, and we love them, of course, and we would not want something to happen to them so that they don't fall overboard. For the same reason, we added the floor uh, on the deck here on the anti-skid because they were sliding all over the place with their little paws. So we added this and it worked out so good that uh, uh, basically uh, we de I decided this year to add some of uh, the same product uh, on the floor here to replace the, the carpet, uh, ridiculous carpet that came with the McGregor that uh, smells like mold all the time. Anyhow, rip that out and uh, install this. It's uh, just did this, this, this project during this vacation now. And I'm quite happy about that. So that's a good segue to uh, come inside and talk more about uh, another section, another category, comfort and electrical. This is really comfortable. As you can see, I came in with my uh, wet feet. It's going to dry out and uh, it's uh, easy to keep it clean. So quite happy about that. Let's jump into the electrical. So I uh, converted, uh, as you know, the McGregor's uh, 26M, they have the place or space for two batteries under here. And I converted that into my um uh electrical uh fuse and uh, chargers and it's basically an electrical bay for me and i'll go through that in a second but my house uh, battery bank now is under uh this siding uh, galley which i thought was uh, uh 
not so easy way to access anything stored there. So I, I converted that into uh, part of it is for my house battery. I'll show that uh, in a second. And I have 300 amp hour of uh, lithium, three, uh, three different batteries of each 100 amp hour, basically. I also have a 3000 uh, watt inverter uh, with the remote uh, here. So turn that on and then uh, the inverter comes on. And right now, as you can see, we even cook with, uh, uh, with induction uh, cooked up, no more gas uh, cooking in the boat. So that's, that keeps the boat a lot cooler because uh, the flame heat uh, heats up the inside of the boat quite a bit. So we like that. Um, and uh, for charging, let's go, let's continue into the um, electrical. I have 200 watt solar with MPPT uh, 20 uh, uh, charge controller for the solar. And uh, I also have a DC to DC charger, which is here. So when I uh, run my engine, I could get 20 amp hour from my uh, alternator uh, to charge my house battery. And I also have a 20 amp, uh, amp hour short charger, but I basically never had to use it because um, we use the boat for trips up to two weeks. Like right now I'm on my second week of two weeks and we're fully autonomous with just charging with the solar and, um, and the uh, DC to DC charger. As you can see right now, I am at 46% battery on my second week, 137 amp hour, and I haven't run the engine for a couple of days now. So that's just solar uh, recharging. So I'm you know, basically using right now 64 watt minus four, minus five amp hour in the battery bank. No worries because it's lithium. It couldn't literally go down to zero. It's not like other batteries like AGM and so on. Anyhow. So I slid the galley all the way over towards the bed just to show you the battery banks. So three batteries here, two would have been plenty, I think, but I, I, uh, I, I chose to go to three because you can't add to a lithium. You have to start with what you want. Anyhow, in retrospect, 200 amp hour would have been plenty. But uh, the, th the three of those batteries are actually about the same weight as one battery AGM. So it's not a whole lot of weight on the side of the boat. And uh, that allowed me to have a bit of a vacuum, uh, uh, 18 volt uh, charger. So as soon as I turn on the inverter, my battery starts to charge and uh, the vacuum is always uh, available and a little drill on the side there because there's always a project to do somewhere. So that's the battery bank for uh, the house battery. So that's plenty of power to uh, run all the electronics I've shown. I have a water pump here um, under the bed with a hundred liter of uh, fresh water. Uh, I'll, I'll try to snap a picture of that uh, after I'm done here because I have to lift the, the bed mattress. And uh, basically I run, uh, it's plenty of power as I said for everything including a fridge. Um, that's here, 53 liter fridge. Uh, it's quite efficient. Uh, but I've never had an issue of running out of power since we've done that upgrade. So I just lifted the bed uh, to show you quickly the bladder, 100 liter of uh, water, and I just filled that up with the hose. I haven't connected a fitting outside the boat. I just run the hose inside, connect here, and fill it up. And I find that this location is low enough that it almost, uh, not almost, it pretty much acts like a, a, bit, a bit more ballast, I guess. Uh, uh, anyway, it hasn't affected the... the um, sailing uh, experience or any performance uh, on the boat, except of course you're carrying a hundred liter of water. I also found that I was not using that storage under there a whole lot because it's, it's, first of all, it's very narrow, very, it's not very high. And it was such a pain to get under the bed to pick up whatever. And there is a bit of water that collects there sometimes a little bit. To that point, I added a, um, a bilge pump. And I guess it's true what people say that uh, you might not need a bilge pump unless you're doing like, uh, you know, blue water, uh, not blue water, but uh, shore uh, uh, crossing or going to Bimini like uh, my friend there in, uh, in uh, Bimini. But uh, anyhow, um, the water pump is there. The bilge pump is there at the back of the rear berth and it's uh, still brand new, never used, <laughs> never, never had to use it. Um, so the rest of the power, uh, maybe I changed this panel here as well. I uh, didn't like the uh, stock uh, panel, so this is uh, all, all a fuse. 
so I could turn on the mast uh, light or this actually. Anyway, I'll, I'll go through that after. Uh, this is my navigation lights, uh, VHF to, op to turn on uh, power to this. Cabin lights, of course. Uh, I think those were stock LED or something. Um, and when I turn on the mast uh, light or mast power, it uh, basically just gives power to this other panel that I put on here. And then I could select if I want my anchor light or steam light or deck light. There's also a deck light, uh, deck light uh, outside. So if I'm at anchor, I just use this one. If I'm uh, moving uh, the boat, uh, put the steam light and deck light could be, could be just for courtesy light or something, you know. Steaming light on just to make sure I have a steam because one of us coming across. So again, just briefly uh, a bit more about what I've done here for my electrical uh, bay. I basically just put my uh, fuse uh, panel here and it's a dual fuse. There's A and B uh, size to this uh, same panel. I think the reflection is prevented. There you go, A and B. And uh, what that is, is uh, one side is uh, totally killed by my kill switch. This is for all the, you know, plotter, water pump and the switch uh, and so on. But the other side is always on because that's my bilge. Uh, that's my horn. That's my fridge. So I don't want those to be turned off at night when I kill all the, the power to everything else. And I've used those, uh, that panel to entry my solar and DC to DC charge. So the charge comes into this panel as well to charge uh, the battery. And the rest is really the shunt system. And this relay is for my uh, my horn. I put the horn on the relay. This, I said, is the DC to DC charger, 20 amp hour. And further that way is the shore power that I said I'll never use, but it's, it's there. As I said, I replaced this uh, and also the addition uh, I took advantage of replacing it to have the addition of a charging port. At the time, USB was the big thing. And now, of course, they're changing things up to USB-C, uh, right? So I added this one here. And the what I did is I, I ran this one to the uh, continuous power side of the panel that you saw earlier. That way at night, if I want to charge uh, iPad, iPhones, uh, there's a UV USB uh, regular 3.0 and two USB uh, C port so I could charge at night without having to have this switch on and as far as my engine battery I moved that into uh, the this portion of uh, this locker here um, and uh, basically this is uh, it, it's my uh, previous battery that I had for the house actually but it was a hybrid battery and it was an AGM group 31 uh, hybrid as I said so 950 cold cranking up but it also can produce 100 amp hour, but being AGM, of course, you only could use 40, 50% of that. But in a pinch, I could use that battery uh, to recharge my lithium to, you know, maybe get out of trouble or something. Never happened before, but it's a dual purpose battery. But I only use it as a starter battery. And maybe I should explain how I built the solo arch from the mast, uh, the mast cradle. So I used the mask rail all uh, that we probably all have. And uh, I, I beefed up or built up the bottom of the solar uh, panel with some aluminum uh, square tubing. And then ran triangulation uh, support uh, here to uh, with, with stainless steel fitting. And uh, basically, if I get up here, hopefully the sun is not too much in the way. But uh, being in Canada, I have to. Uh, I didn't want to take the whole solar panel down in the winter, but I removed the, uh, the uh, triangular support, and this is on a swivel. So the whole panel basically comes down uh, pretty much uh, vertical to avoid the snow buildup in the winter. That makes me think I might need to talk about the elephant in a room. What's the deal with my uh, steps here? So I made. I made this uh, modification uh, when I was fed up for a few years to try to get into the rear berth uh, to sleep and get up at uh, in the morning. So basically, uh, it's uh, it was customized uh, by a, a welder, marine welder, and uh, I when it's like this, obviously it's solid. Uh, the, the two uh, two slides go into the steps. I have a video about that. Actually, you can go check that out. And to open it up, I just do this. 
watch your ears i have to lub lubricate that i guess but yeah this is the easier way to get to the rear bird so i like that so the other method of cooking that uh, we use daily is our grill our barbecue love uh, love uh, using this i just use the portable tanks and it's mounted here on the stanchion it could stay there while uh, sailing uh, motoring it doesn't matter it's uh, it's uh, very solid and it's not going anywhere and uh, we love uh, the grill uh, on the on the boat still in the comfort category but it's almost sailing category the large bimini from blue water yacht we love that uh, that addition we had the smaller one before had to take it uh, back when sailing because the boom would not pass through now the boom uh, goes right on top of it we could sail uh, in the shade love it but also it, ha it comes with uh, a connector here uh, to this other addition we've done which is the the dodger and the dodger you know i'm gonna call it comfort uh, even though it's uh, also a sailing uh, upgrade uh, it's supposed to dodge uh, water splash, but we're not that kind of sailor so far. I think only once I've had water uh, fly all the way up into uh, the Dodger. But it's really a great addition to um, to comfort. I mean, uh, when it rains, you can leave everything open like this. And uh, I have the connector here that closed off this portion, so there's no rain coming in. And at night, I put the bug screen uh, window here, uh, bug, screen, bug screen door, I should say. Uh, that zips on the dodger and i have a homemade my mom made me a a, a screen uh, with magnet magnets to uh, be used in the front hatch and uh, and that's working out really great as well i'll show you that and just like that that's what i mean by this enclosure the uh, section that we add between the mini and the dodger just basically closes everything here and I don't have to uh, I don't have to close the hatch to have no rain in the in the cabin so that's great it's not a full enclosure for the cockpit but it's just great for a cabin I also cut a plexiglass to fit the companion away and uh, made a cover to protect that uh, and store it on the wall and the head and I also made this uh, flip-up uh, counter extension just so uh, when we need a bit more space for cooking, cleaning up or whatever, uh, we could use that. Apart from that, well, you saw me use uh, that stainless steel uh, sink. I added that when I put the water pump uh, and changed everything at once. Uh, as far as comfort goes, well, we added uh, had this here. This thing here is really just two-way tape on the table and uh, velcro on on, uh, on uh, the carpet and it holds really well so there's no holes in the table uh, and i added these uh, two drawers i made these uh, doing a winter project brought the table in and uh, basically for utensils so it's easier self-closing and uh, when i did this uh, switch here uh, to have uh, more uh, lights on uh, on the mast i had to empty all this of uh, foam this is full of foam usually uh, part of the I guess safety flotation thing Mr. McGregor thought of uh, but I figured I could go without uh, some of that foam and uh, once I saw the nice space here I thought wow I'll do a door uh, an opening I, I have yet to to figure out a door to go on top of this but I, I cut out an opening and now it's all our breakfast stuff coffee and everything else above uh, the mirror so uh, we use that daily and it's a really a great position to have some extra storage the rest of the storage as i said i try to avoid holes so everything is suction cup those hold really well uh even this area this is like a back uh, a trunk uh, bag i guess for cars and these uh these suction cup hold it there with velcro behind the the, the bag and i got bug spray uh, everything in there uh, that you could think of uh, binoculars uh, flashlight marine flashlight and so on but yeah everything i try to hold with uh, when i can with suction cup and they make some really good ones that way um, don't have to make holes everywhere if you change your mind it's a it's a bit of a pain in the butt and this fire blanket i think is i will well highly recommend it never used it thank god touch touch wood here that's wood um but yeah never use it but uh if, if you have a small fire and you turn on the fire extinguisher in the boat you're gonna be cleaning up that boat for a long time so this blanket could save you a lot of trouble 
if the fire is out and you need the fire extinguisher, of course, no worries. But uh, basically, this is always there. You pull these tabs, the blanket comes uh, out of there, and you put put that on top of uh, whatever is uh, on fire, barbecue, engine, you know, whatever. So I like that. A little bit past the fridge, I got some more storage. Uh, this is also held by Velcro on uh, the carpet. Uh, works out well, just for stuff we use uh, often. And uh, as we say, what goes in must go out. So uh, we got the regular power potty there uh, in uh, near the front berth. All right, so I think that covers uh, most of it, all the big ticket items and even a few small ticket items, uh, I think, uh, of uh, for the boat. Um, hope you enjoyed this. And uh, the last thing is when you're done with all the sailing and cooking and everything I showed you, well, at night, time for lunch, time for dinner. Uh, I really like this table. You set it up like this. You could rem I remove it totally for sailing, but at night, got the table. We eat outside 99% of the time. Uh, has to be a really big storm or a long, uh, long uh, stretch of rain for us to eat inside. And uh, so we eat here all the time, the two of us, and the very indispensable uh, wine glass holder to have uh, your drink, uh, sundowner, or have a glass of wine during uh, during uh, dinner. So hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, if I haven't answered something, leave me a comment uh, in, uh, in uh, the box below or send me a private message. I'll be happy to answer your question. Cheers, guys. Mm -hmm.